committee lecture discussion series. And today's topic of my discussion will be about the acute inflammation and the events what are there, what are seen during and acute inflammation is there. So before getting into the detailed discussion about the events what are going to take place in acute inflammation, just a one line definition of inflammation. Inflammation is defined as a local response of a living mammalian tissue to inhibit or to limit the spread of the noxious stimuli followed by the removal of the necrosed cell. So the process of inflammation can be broadly subdivided into two groups. That is one is the acute inflammation and the other is the and the other is the chronic inflammation. So the acute inflammation, the events what I'll be mainly focusing upon that the word acute itself means that there is certain time, the duration of the inflammation is of a shorter period. So it was the Celsus, the Greek philosopher, the Greek, uh, the Roman, he was, uh, the Celsus was a Roman, he belonged, he was a Roman, uh, Roman and he, it was Celsus who, who described in the first century AD that the four cardinal signs of inflammation. So whenever there is going to be an inflammation, there has, it has to be accompanied by four cardinal signs, that is the rubor, that is, which is the redness, the calor, that is the increase in temperature, dollar, that is the, it is the pain, and tumor, which is the swelling. So it was Celsus in the first century AD who first described the four cardinal signs, and finally it was the fifth cardinal sign, what was later on added by Rudolf Virgo, it was function Lisa, that is loss of function. So whenever at a particular organ or a particular site, the inflammation is seen, there is basically these four cardinal signs. And ultimately, when there, these four cardinal signs are there, there has to be a loss of function of that particular organ, which was finally called as function Lisa, the term given by Rudolf Virko. So the events, what uh, today's video, it is mainly focusing upon the events in acute inflammation and the word acute, wherever the word acute has been added, it refers to a time period which is of a shorter duration, particularly lesser than two weeks. If the inflammation, the, the duration of the inflammation is for a lesser duration that is less than two weeks, it is of an acute variety and particularly the acute inflammation, it is characterized by the accumulation of fluid or plasma at the affected site. So the affected site is going to having is going to have an accumulation of the fluid or the plasma at that particular region, followed by there is an intravascular activation of platelets. So whenever there is going to uh, Whenever there is any kind of an injury or a noxious stimuli, the activation of the platelet compartment is going to take place. And finally, the, the first, the foremost, and the very important fact, what needs to be remembered is that whenever there is going to be an acute inflammation, the inflammatory cells, what are being particularly or the chiefly involved, it is the leukocytes, particularly the neutrophils. So the neutrophils, they form the first line of defense during any kind of an acute inflammation. And the polymorphonuclear leukocytes, that is particularly the neutrophils, they come into play. So today's video, I will be mainly talking about the two events, what are going to take place during acute inflammation. First is the vascular event and next is the cellular event. So today, since I don't want to extend the video to a much longer time period because this is going to take longer time, in the, this first section of this video, I will be mainly talking of the vascular events. So students beginning with, so during the process of acute inflammation, there is particularly going to take place two things. First is the hemodynamic changes in which the flow of the blood, the motion, the, the rate at which the blood was flowing, the changes in the blood circulation is going to take place, which is uh, studied under the hemodynamic changes. And next we have the altered vascular permeability. So altered vascular permeability that is going, uh, going to take place due to the leakiness in an inflamed tissue, the endothelial 
with cells lining the microvasculature, there is an increased leakiness in the endothelial cells of the microvasculature, and that leads to the exudative inflammatory edema, what is mostly seen during the process of acute inflammation, during acute inflammation. So starting with, the first is during the vascular events, we have the hemodynamic changes, and these hemodynamic changes can be studied under these four or five categories. That is the first hemodynamic change, where the change in the flow of the blood is going to take place. So firstly, what is going to happen is, whenever there is any kind of an injury, so the fact what needs to be remembered is that there is transient vasoconstriction occurring. So for a shorter period of time, for a shorter duration of time, there is going to occur transient vasoconstriction. And this vasoconstriction is going to cause limit, limited or for the first three to five minutes, there is this vasoconstriction is going to cause the restriction of the blood flow in that particular region. And for three to five minutes, there is transient vasoconstriction occurring. Immediately after three to five minutes, after the transient vasoconstriction has taken place, there is persistent progressive vasodilatation. So in order to, there is due to transient vasoconstriction at the site of the inflammation where the noxious stimuli is there, initially there is going to occur a transient vasoconstriction which is going to help in the hemostasis of the blood. It is going to cause the hemostasis of the blood that is there is a decreased amount of blood in that particular area but immediately after this that is this period of transient vasoconstriction which persists for three to five minutes after that what is seen there is persistent progressive vasodilatation and this persistent progressive vasodilatation usually lasts for about half an hour after of injury after half an hour of injury about from the start of the injury to the half an hour after the vasoconstriction there is persistent progressive vasodilatation and this persistent progressive vasodilatation is particularly responsible for the redness because there is vasodilatation means there is an increased supply of blood to that to the inflamed site so when there is an increased amount of blood flow to the inflamed site there is going to occur redness and there is going to occur warmth at the inflammation site after that what is seen is that due to this persistent progressive vasodilatation there is an increase in the local local hydrostatic pressure so the hydrostatic pressure there is an increase in the local hydrostatic pressure and this local increase in the local hydrostatic pressure is going to cause the transformation of fluid into the extracellular space extracellular space so the transformation of fluid into the extracellular um, into the extracellular is going to take place and that is ultimately going to the accumulation of excess fluid at the site of the injury so that is ultimately seen as a form of an edema that is this edema is basically of exudative or the exudative inflammatory edema and after the transformation of fluid into the extracellular space is going to take place, there is slowing or stasis of the microcirculation. So the capillaries what are predominantly involved in the slow in the uh, microcirculation. So the blood flow to that those capillaries is going to slow down, and ultimately there is a going to increase in the red cell concentration. So the amount of the red cell concentration is going to increase and finally what is going to take place is this increase in the amount of the red cell concentration is followed by the margination of the leukocytes. So students one fact what I need to emphasize over here that during this is the schematic diagram what I have drawn for a blood vessel. So this is the lining, so this is the basement membrane of the blood vessel. And this basement membrane of the blood uh, vessel or the microvasculature is lined by the endothelial cells. So these are the endothelial cells what I have drawn. So during a normal 
on a healthy tissue in a healthy circulation the blood flow the there the blood flow what is there it is mostly the axial blood flow means the all the components all the formed elements of the blood whether it be the wbc the rbcs the platelet they flow in the central or the axial stream so there is during a normal circulation what is seen that there is an axial blood flow with all the cellular components of the blood flowing in the midstream or in the middle of the lumen of the capillaries within the middle of the lumen of the vascular compartment during a normal blood flow axial blood flow what is seen and is that um what is seen that immediately after this okay immediately this after the during the process of an inflammation the axial blood flow is altered so this axial blood flow during the uh, whenever an inflammation is going to occur this axial blood flow is altered and the plasma the normal cellular components are per floating in the middle of the lumen and the plasma what was there that was in the periphery that was having a broader zone but since uh, during the process of inflammation the plasma is going to leak out the endothelial cells becomes leakier so the excess of the plasma is uh, the endothelial cells due to the leakiness due to the increased leakiness of the endothelial cells the plasma is going to filter out more rapidly in the extra vascular compartment so the not the thickening the thickness of the plasma what was there is going to reduce in the periphery of the lumen of the arterioles or the microvasculature the thick the the width of the plasma what was there in a normal circulation that is going to reduce the narrow zone of the plasma becomes much narrower due to the leakiness of the endothelial cells now what is going to happen is since there is slowing of stasis of the microvasculature which is followed by the margination or the phase melting of the neutrophils particularly the leukocytes what are going to what are going to lie close to the margins of the periphery of the endothelial cells they will migrate towards the endothelial cells and they are going to form a transient bond between the endothelial cell and the neutrophils so these neutrophils and the endothelial cells they are going to have a certain kind of a transient bonding and slowly and gradually where the process of this is called as adhesion of the neutrophils to the endothelial cells and this is also seen that these neutrophils they roll around along the margins of the endothelial cell so firstly there is the pigmenting is there means the neutrophils are going to come and align on the endothelial cell they will slowly roll along the endothelial cells and after that there is no pigmenting was there that is the pigmenting is there the rolling of the neutrophils is there and finally the neutrophils they are going to squeeze out through the thin pores what are seen in the endothelial spaces the, the cells what are there between the endothelial cells there is going to occur minute pores between these two cells and the neutrophils are going to slowly escape out through the thin pores because these neutrophils they are the first line of defense they have to fight they have to uh, inhibit the spread of the noxious agent or the noxious stimuli so they are going to come into activation and they are going to migrate through the thin pores between the endothelial cells and this migration of the endo this migration of the neutrophils through the pores between the endothelial cell is called as immigration so as slowly and gradually the immigration has taken place the mitochondria the neutrophils they are going to escape out through the pores simultaneously there is certain amount of red blood cells what are also going to escape through these pores between the endothelial cells and ultimately this process of the escape of the red blood cells through these endothelial pores the diaphysis the particularly the diaphysis term is used for the rbcs when the rbcs are going to escape through the thick pores between the endothelial cells 
and it is the integration of the neutrophils what are going to take place. So students, this was a short discussion about the hemodynamic changes or the vascular events what are going to take place during an acute inflammation. Since in the second part of the same video, I'll be talking of the, the phagocytosis, the recognition and attachment, the engulfing and the killing and degradation. So students, this was a short discussion about the, here I have discussed only the vascular events what are going to take place in acute inflammation. In the second part, I'll be talking of the cellular events. So the students, if you have any queries or comments, you are most welcome to comment me in the comment section. And the students who are visiting my channel for the first time and they haven't subscribed yet, please go do a subscribe on my channel and uh, stay tuned and connected for the next part what I'll be talking of there. I'll be talking of the cellular events which are going to take place in acute information. So students, thank you for watching.